Connor Knighton has been island hopping again, and on this royal wedding weekend, he's found the perfect destination. I flew 13,374 miles from Los Angeles to London to Johannesburg to Windhoek, Namibia, before I finally touched down on this patch of royal soil in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And believe it or not, that was the easy way to get here. This island has been here in the middle of the South Atlantic, six days away from anywhere for 500 years. Governor Lisa Honan is the Queen's representative in St. Helena, a British island that's over four and a half thousand miles south of Great Britain. Commercial flights only started arriving here in October. Before that, the only way in or out was on a boat. The Royal Mail ship, the RMS St. Helena, sailed its final voyage earlier this year. There wasn't a dry eye in the island when the ship sailed away. People were down at the quayside, crying, waving. Now, it's up to a controversial new $400 million airport to serve as the lifeline for the 4,000 people who live here. Well, uh, the locals call ourselves saints. Yeah, and we're referred to as saints. Or it's not a, not a bad, uh, not bad path not to sainthood. I like that I'm a saint. Yeah, yeah by birth you're a saint. <laughs> Giselle Richards was born here and is the owner of G Unique Designs a small shop selling handmade jewelry as unique as the saints themselves. You look at five different St. Helenians, we all look com completely different, yeah? Because we have so many cultural influences in terms of ancestry that none of us look the same. Originally discovered by the Portuguese, St. Helena received its first British settlers in 1659 when the East India Company took possession. It became a vital, heavily fortified trading stop. And in its heyday, the bustling port was hosting up to three ships a day. The residents today are the descendants of the soldiers, settlers, and slaves who came to the island. But St. Helena's most famous resident came to the island over 200 years ago. He was sent here. Napoleon Bonaparte was exiled to St. Helena in 1815. A year earlier, he'd escaped from exile on the island of Elba. This time, the British weren't taking any chances. So then they decided to send Napoleon to the only place uh, which can guarantee his no return ticket. Michel Duncan Martineau is the director of Longwood House, the home where Napoleon lived and died while on St. Helena. Napoleon rarely left Longwood and cut holes in the shutters so he could stay inside and spy on the people who were assigned to watch him. So 169 was his height, uh, 1 meter 69. So he, his eye level would be here. And just so he could peep out and look at the world. That's so sad that he just sort of kept himself yeah, yeah. enclosed so, in here. Outside, the stunning landscape looks nothing like what you might find back in the UK. But in the capital city of Jamestown, sandwiched into a volcanic valley, the narrow streets and colorful buildings feel as if they could exist on the outskirts of London. We still feel that we are British through and through, you know. Uh, my grandmother still has all the commemorative plates of the Queen in our house, you know. Um, every wedding we get the, all of the um, merchandise, you know. It's, we are proudly British, I think, yes. Aaron Legg yeah, is a so tour guide on the week, island, uh, a job which, right now, so gives him just a few customers a week. In 2016, officials discovered it was too windy for larger planes to safely land on St. Helena's clifftop. A miscalculation that meant that instead of an optimistic 30,000 tourists a year, the island is now hoping for just 3,000. Those few who do make the journey are generally pretty easy to spot. You can tell which are the tourists because they don't wave. <laughs> Everyone else waves. I'm too afraid of driving on the other side of the road. Don't, don't blame me for not waving. Yeah, yeah. On a small island where everyone knows everyone, there's no room for any stereotypical British reserve. We've always been told that we're friendly and welcoming, and it's not until you get here that you realize that it's genuine, it's not a put on show, so enjoy it. Now that getting here has gotten slightly easier, St. Helena is hoping the rest of the world might finally come to enjoy what this remote island has to offer. A place that was once a useful stopover is now ready to become known as a destination.